Hey, Maestro. What's happening? Welcome to St. John. Thanks for having me. Okay, so I want to talk to you about a lot of things, but the first thing that I want to talk to you about is when you were a young maestro, going to school, growing up. What was that like for you? So a young maestro going to school, um, I'm born in Toronto. I was born in Toronto, raised in Toronto. If I wanted to, I could run for mayor of Toronto. Yeah. And um, it, it was beautiful, man. Toronto is a beautiful city, ethnically diverse. My parents are from Guyana, South America great Caribbean community, and um, it was good, man. I had a lot of cool elementary school teachers that really were inspiring to me coming up, and Toronto was a beautiful city, still is. And uh, when you first started out, you were like working security at Parkway Mall in Scarborough? So when I first started um, saying to myself, you know what, let me, let me take this, this music thing seriously, I had to make demo tapes, right? So how am I going to get the money to make demo tapes? So I got a part-time job at Parkway Mall, in Scarborough, which wasn't too far from my old high school, Senator O'Connor, and um, I wrote a couple songs there, man. One of them was called I'm Showing You. The other one was called Let Your Backbone Slide. This jam is amplified, so just glide. glide. Let your backbone slide. slide. And um, from that, you know, we took it to the next level. I'll say, you know, a lot of firsts since then, like uh, first Canadian rap song certified gold, first album by a black Canadian to go platinum, first rap song in the Canadian Songwriters Hall of Fame, like lots of firsts there, man. Yeah, man. Um, how did that journey take you here to St. John, New Brunswick? Well, you know, through life, through trials, tribulations, and, and you know, let's, let's be for real, man, there's something called COVID-19, man, and this, is, this um, put an impact on everybody, not just nationally, but globally. So from a family perspective, we felt this was the best thing for us to do for, for, for the family, you know? And um, I think we definitely made a good decision because people are very accommodating here in the city. Probably the friendliest people I've ever met in my life is St. John, New Brunswick. What do they do that tells you that they're friendly? Why, why do you say that? Why I think people are so friendly here is because just when you see them, you, it's, it's the energy you get. It's they're welcoming, you know? Um, and that's the overall thing with the Maritimes, but specifically St. John, I just find the people are very welcoming from the local Tim Hortons to the local Sobeys, to the local No Frills or to the, to the local Irvings or Deluxe Fish and Chips, you know? Do you remember the moment where you thought, hey, St. John is gonna be a place where I could live? Nah, nah, cause a lot of things happen like, like quickly. Like if you asked me that last year in March, this time I, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you, you know? But um, I'm glad I'm here though, man. Holy smokes, man, it's good. So what makes New Brunswick so good for you? What are some of the things you like about it? Well, the fish and chips, incredible. Um, I think the fish and chips stand out. <laughs> and there's a place up here, not too far from here, that I went the other day, Cask and Kettle, is that what it's called? Woo! Man. What about the thing that is your life? What about the music scene here? How would you describe the hip hop scene on the East Coast of Canada? Well, when I think of the East Coast of Canada, um, I think I'm a man classified, right? Lately though, I will admit I've been getting familiar with a lot of um, local talent. As a matter of fact, I got a show coming up where, where, and the mixes are new, new Brunswick artists. Like how cool is that? So there's a lot of talent right here in the province. Um, but if I wasn't here, I wouldn't have that opportunity to, um, to learn about. Who else locally are you watching right now? Um, locally? Um, I mean, my man David Miles, he's real cool. That's my man. He said he got, it's his inner ninja. You know, so shout out to my man David Miles. Um, there's a lot of artists, but I'm getting to learn more about the artists here in, in the city. Okay, you down to play a game? As long as it's a good one. Okay, I think it's a good one. So I'm gonna say a recording artist, and you're gonna tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. They're like, no wrong answers, just whatever you think, okay? Mm. I'm gonna start with an easy one. Classified. Welcome to the Maritime. Welcome to the Maritime. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what about Drake? Drake. So when I think of Drake, I think like, I think the grassy. I think um, cause I was on a show called Instant Star, while he's doing um, while he was shooting the grassy. So and then the first thing he ever told me is he he's working on his music. So. <laughs> wow, he did work on his music. He definitely did work on his music. Ever since I left the city. What do people like Drake sort of give to you? You know, like what what, what did he give to you as an artist? What Drake gave to me as an artist, as well as everyone else in Canada, is the fact that you, you can do this and think outside the box for his generation. You know, what I did was like back in the days, and what he's doing is right now showing that um, it's not just Canada, 
it's globally and it's 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 like the next generation it's one thing about being an artist but when you're the voice of your generation that's a whole different ball game and that's that's what the young man is all right what about stomping tom connors i think country music man i i, I just see him stomping with a banjo in his, in his hand that's what i think and a cowboy hat misha bruger gosman That's my girl right there. We did a song called um, Sinfonia Destino. How many MCs you know have done opera joints, you know? <laughs> so that's my girl, that's my good friend. All right, a couple more. Cardinal Official. My younger brother. <laughs> yeah, that's Car Cardi's probably my favorite MC out of Toronto, out of the city. Yeah. Last one. What do you think of Great Big C? Great Big C? Weren't they on, um, they were on that show. They were on that Newfoundland show, Great Big C. What was it called? That was shot out The Republic of Doyle? The Republic of Doyle. That's what I think of Great Big C. <laughs> Sick. Thanks for playing. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, next thing. Um, 2019 track, drama, um, with Tona, you're talking about gun violence in Toronto, yeah. right? And your yeah. verse says, this is the reason I never go out. I stay in my house. I mind my own business. Too old to be thinking about the drama. You think I forget? You and your clicks are just the trash. That disrespect has a ripple effect on your pip and your tackles and villains are wet. You're the main reason why people get crushed. No need to discuss. Your head of a boss. You're the main reason why people get dust. Like, were you trying to get away from the drama when you came here? You know what? Maybe that was like a precursor without me knowing, man. That's a very good question, but, um, the song is called Drama, and what I did, Julia, I try to um, put myself in the position of chaos going around me, and what would my, what would my frame of mind be, and I wanted to perform it in a dramatic way. So that's that's the whole thing right there. But yes, it was about like this is why I don't go out, you know. This is why a lot of people don't go out because of the gun violence that, that that's happening, and um, so that's what that that was what I was trying to convey in that. But also. There's a song called uh, Wish I Could, and Wish I Could was a song that I, I, the video that I brought out this jacket in, and that was specifically uh, dealing with the gun violence in Toronto. And it shows that we have an opportunity and an obligation as artists, man. It's like, and I got a slogan, don't make records, make history. I like that, don't make records, make history. Don't make records, make history. We're, we're in the process right now of making our own history, regardless of what happens in the world, that we're, we're trying to go forth and forward, man. So. That's how I look at it. So what's the next chapter in your history? Well, speaking of chapter, I'm very proud of my second book. It's called Stick to Your Vision, Young Maestro Goes to School. And this book emphasizes the importance of family structure, hip hop, mentorship, but also the impact that inspirational elementary school teachers can make on you because I've been so blessed to have some great elementary school teachers that helped mold me along with my family but made them, they were very instrumental in helping me become the man I am today, the artist I am today. And I feel the teachers are unappreciated. And it's, it sucks because they made such an impact on my life. And I wish that, uh, that when people read this book, it, re, um, it makes them you know, reassess and reevaluate their importance. It's not easy growing up in Toronto. It's not easy growing up here for like for different reasons, right? Like, what would you say to those kids who are out there in St. John thinking, "Wow, this this huge artist, like the Godfather of Canadian hip hop, has moved to my city"? And and what would you say to those kids who are inspired by that? In terms of being an artist, I tell them, like, listen, man, it's easy to assimilate, but I like to be around people who innovate. You know, it's easy to be an assimilator, but the innovators are the ones that you remember years and years uh, down the road. So. I would tell people to tap into their own artistry, tap into your own true greatness, and, and take it from there, because this is going on 30 plus years of my first single, and I must have made some type of history. I must have done something noteworthy for you guys to want to interview me again and, and, and what have you, so. What does it mean to you to stick to your vision, Maestro? Stick to your vision means now is um, you come along in a time like this where you know we've been affected with, with COVID-19, um, you could have a vision, but sometimes you gotta have a revision. You gotta revise certain things, right? And, and from that, you still tap into your own, own greatness. Did I know last year, this time, that I'd be living by the, the Bay of Fundy? <laughs> no, you see what I'm saying? But I made a couple adjustments along the way. I'm here, I got this. Um, wonderful people around me, you know? Wonderful book project, wonderful radio show. It's awesome, it's awesome to be here. Welcome to St. John, man. We're lucky to have you here. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right.